Hello, this is Math Jazz from Almost Cool. This is the third video in our series of videos on limits. Our topic today is the Epsilon Delta Definition of Limit. The limit of f of x as x approaches a is L if for every epsilon greater than zero there exists delta greater than zero such that if zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon. We use the same notation as in the sequential definition to denote this property limit as x goes to a of f of x equals L. Now the epsilon delta definition is, is easier to use to prove that a limit exists or what the value of a limit is but it takes more effort to understand I think because it introduces these extra variables in epsilon and delta and it uses them in a very particular way and um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a specific example of a function at a point with a set epsilon to try and understand how all of these pieces fit together. So here's a function. Um, I have f of x equals x cubed minus 8.75x squared plus 23x minus 14. This is uh, that function here. I've graphed on top of it the line x equals a, which is the vertical line there, and the line um, y equals L, which is the uh, the kind of reddish, purplish line that's going horizontally, and this will be kind of the framework that we use to piece together what the epsilon delta definition means. So we're going to set epsilon to be one for this example. So we're going to find the delta or a delta that works for this epsilon in the definition. If we can find a delta for every epsilon then the limit exists and we have its value. But we're going to start by having this one particular epsilon, we're going to say epsilon equals one, and we're going to find if there is a delta that will work for that. So here is what we call our epsilon band. It's the line y equals L, which is the green line here, and then the line y equals L plus epsilon is these, this uh, uh, purplish line, and L, or y equals L minus epsilon is this yellow line down here. Now, the way that the definition of limit works, the epsilon delta definition works, is that it I can find for every epsilon band, you know, every one of these horizontal um, regions where all of the y values are between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon, if I can find a delta region that goes vertically so that whenever I stay in that vertical region, my function is trapped between this horizontal region, then I have proved that the limit exists and that I have found its value. So our goal is to find that delta band centered on on x equals a, which is this vertical line. x equals a is this vertical line here. And I have to find some region where it's x minus delta and x plus delta so that when my function is within these x values, then f of my x values is within these y values here. So here are um, here are two lines this is going to be x minus delta and x plus delta. Uh, x minus delta is, sorry, a minus delta is this yellow vertical line, and a plus delta is this um, pinkish purplish line here. And notice that if I stick between the yellow and purple lines with my x values, my function stays between the yellow and purple lines on the y values. So this delta works for this epsilon. So I used a, an epsilon of 1 and I picked a delta of 0 
and this point two delta works for this epsilon region. Now, to prove that this is this line, this green line here, this L value is in fact the limit, we have to show that for every epsilon, this uh, this particular um, or for every epsilon we can find some delta. It might we might need to use a smaller delta than 0.2. In fact, if I let epsilon be 0.5, we notice that delta equals 0.2 does not work anymore. Because if I look at my my vertical yellow line and my vertical purple line, there are there are x values so that my function is too high, that is above the horizontal purple line, and x values where my function is too low, that is it is below the horizontal yellow line. And that means that this delta does not work for this epsilon. This delta of 0.2 is too big for my epsilon of 0.5, even though 0.2 was a perfectly good delta for when epsilon was 1. Now, if I reduce my delta to 0.1, um, if we shrink it down to 0.1, then now it seems to work again. Notice that my function is now in this box that's bounded by these two yellow lines and these two pink lines, or two purple lines. Uh, my function, whenever I am between the vertical lines, my function is between these two horizontal lines, and so I found a new delta for the new epsilon that seems to work. Now, this does not prove that the limit of this function is in fact L, which uh, I believe L was 3.25 when, when I had the value up on screen, but it doesn't prove that this limit is in fact that number because I didn't show for every epsilon. What we have to do to show that for every epsilon there's a delta is we have to come up with a function whose input is epsilon and whose output is a delta that works. And when we do that, when we can prove that we have a function that does that, that is what we say when we prove um, that L is the limit of f of x at a. Like, to prove that a limit exists and that it is a particular value, we have to show that there is a function that takes in an epsilon and spits out a delta that will work for the definition of limit for that epsilon. And we're not going to do that for this function. Um, but we will do an example of that in uh, another video. Here's an example of a limit that does not exist using the epsilon delta definition of limit. So uh, this function comes from our video on the se sequential definition of limit, f of x equals sine of 1 over x. We're wanting to show, we'll show in another video, that the epsilon delta definition of limit and the sequential definition of limit give the same thing with the same types of properties. That the limit in one definition is going to be the same as the limit in another definition, or in the other definition, uh, every time. That when a limit doesn't exist in one, it doesn't exist in the other. Whatever the value of a limit that exists is in one definition, that's both going to say that the limit exists in the other definition and is that value in the other definition. But that's a topic for another video, and we'll get to that uh, maybe one or two videos from now. However, we, knew, we know that this limit does not exist using the sequential definition, so we should get that the limit does not exist in the epsilon delta definition. And, and that's in fact true. Notice, no matter where I put my horizontal line, to, uh, to try and say this y value is my limit, um, there is no epsilon band, sorry, there is no delta band that will work for small epsilon bands. So now if I make, for example, this is my epsilon band, as long as my epsilon band is smaller than uh, epsilon equals a half, then I'm going to have points that are just too high or points that are too low no matter where I try and put my delta band. It just, it won't work. 
Um, no matter how close my delta band gets to the line x equals zero or the the y-axis, I'm just I have these points that are above the purple line and points that are below the the yellow line. And if I move my limit, like if I say, oh well, I just guessed wrong. Uh, the green line is not the limit of this function. Well, you can see that I can put that basically anywhere between, or I, I can put the green line anywhere on any y value, and I'm still going to have points that are either too low or too high. The best I can do is if I put the green line completely above the graph, then all of my points are too low. Or if I put the green line below the graph of sine of 1 over x, then all of my points are going to be above, but I can't get a situation where no points are above and no points are below at the same time. So this limit does not exist. And it's, it's a good thing, because this matches the, the definition, uh, the sequential definition of limit, where this limit didn't exist in that definition either. So um, in the next video, or maybe a video after that, we are going to see a proof of why these two definitions of limit are equivalent. Thank you for watching this video. Contact information is on the screen. I hope that you're enjoying learning calculus, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!